Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here going over part 2 of 1.02 Phases of Matter. We left off talking about solids and now we are going to move on and talk about liquids. So the liquid in this case of course is the ocean water. The water is fluid meaning that it does not have a definite shape but it does occupy a fixed volume and therefore it is a liquid. So if we look at our molecules when we go to liquid how would we compare them to the solid? How would we compare their speed? How would we compare if they're close together or far apart? And if you notice, there's always this one that keeps bouncing off, right? And that's showing us evaporation, like how when you have a glass of water sitting out for a couple days, pretty soon there's no water left. That's because some of the molecules are bouncing around, and when they get to the top, they keep bouncing and then woohoo, I'm free, I'm free. They're farther away. But if you notice, if you have a cover on your container, well, they keep bouncing all over until they randomly bounce back into the liquid and they become liquid again. All right, so in our notes, let's go ahead and add to liquid. So liquid does not have a definite shape, meaning the shape changes and you know that. If you have water and it's in the glass, it's the shape of the glass. If you spill the water on the floor of the table, it spreads out. But it does have a fixed or constant volume. What that means is I measure this and I have one cup of water. If I spill it, I still have one cup of water. Or if I have a gallon of milk and I spill it all over the floor, not only do you have a very happy cat, you have one gallon of milk on the floor. So here's our example. When you put water in a glass, it takes the shape of the glass, but on the floor, it spreads all over. However, one cup of water is one cup, whether it's in a glass or on the floor. A gallon of water is one gallon, whether it's in the gallon jug or on the floor. Molecules and liquids move at medium speeds and stay kinda together, meaning they flow, but they stick close together. Now, if you're like, oh wait, what about the one that evaporated? We're gonna get to that a little bit later. So for now, we're talking about the majority of the molecules, not this little evaporation, this little lone wolf out there. Oh, that's right, I do sound effects. Um, <laughs> that goes all crazy and evaporates. We'll talk more about those later. All right, so our next one is talking about gas. And the gas is in the air, which we talked about is water vapor, but if you call it steam, that's fine. I'm not going to mark it wrong. The water vapor in the air expands to any size and shape. Water vapor is water in a gas state. So gas does not have a definite shape, so the shape changes, and does not have a fixed volume. So in other words, the gas molecules spread out until they fill up a container. For example, when a match is lit by the kitchen, in the kitchen by the sink. Soon you can smell the match in the entire kitchen because the gas molecules spread out to fill the container, or in this case, the room, the entire kitchen. And molecules and gases move fast and far apart. So when we had our solid, it stuck nice and perfectly close together into our square form liquids, it's flowing, maybe a little bit of evaporation if one of the molecules gets too much energy and goes crazy. Gases, they are everywhere, every little corner. They spread out and they are moving fast and taking up the entire container. And so for my picture for this one, I have two containers and here we have our gas molecules and if you count them, you would see that there are 12 molecules here and when I shove the container down, how many molecules do I have? I still have 12 molecules. So the gas can be squeezed together or when there's a lot of room in the container, it spreads out. So that's what we mean by it takes the shape of the container. Now, personally, I think that diagrams help. So if you have a cool a tool <laughs> called Snippet, which looks like that if you search for snipping tool, 
you can easily just grab the pictures that I have, or if you are more artistically inclined than I am, you can sketch them. But sometimes having little pictures like this, especially when you're studying for a test, helps. So that when you get to the test and I say, does a liquid have a definite shape or definite volume or both or neither you can think of the pictures in your head and it actually does help so I would definitely suggest you know pausing as you need to obviously and drawing pictures or you know going the internet and finding your own that are more exciting than mine or whatever <laughs> obviously as long as they have to do with the topic and put them in your notes there are many examples of solids liquids or gases um, one of the things we're going to talk about a lot in this class are things that are metals, like gold and silver, aluminum, nickel, iron, and most of them are solid at room temperature. Um, some non-metals, like charcoal and graphite, which are forms of carbon, are solid. Obviously, you know this. Liquids, all kinds of liquids. Um, mer mercury is a liquid metal at room temperature. And, of course, gases, such as neon. So to determine if something is a solid, liquid, or gas, you say, when placed in a container, does it have a fixed volume? Does it have a definite shape? So if it does have a fixed volume and a definite shape, what is it? It's a solid. What about if it has neither? It does not have a fixed volume. So it changes volume and it changes shape. That would be a gas. And which one's a liquid? Does a liquid have a fixed volume? Yep, one gallon of milk in the gallon jug is the same as one gallon of milk in your very fat cat's tummy. Still a gallon, fixed volume. And definite shape, nope, it's going to spill all over the place. So that's a huge hint in chemistry class. When you have examples like this, think about things in real life because that's going to make more sense to you than just trying to randomly memorize facts. Instead, when you think about it, think of a liquid. Think, okay, water, what's true? Oh, okay, I know this. Solid. Look at your pen. Oh yeah, same shape, same amount of space. I got this, no big deal. So I have to insert a little humor into chemistry. Here's my cat that drank my gallon of milk, or in other words, dog. I haven't seen him today. So solid, liquid, and gas are what we're gonna focus on, but there is a fourth state of matter, and that, of course, is plasma. The most common place for plasma is the sun. And in fact, all stars, are plasma. So in the universe, plasma is very, very common. On Earth, it's pretty rare. So some examples on Earth are the plasma glows in neon lights, the plasma glows in fluorescent lights, and of course, lightning. So matter can also exist in a form called plasma. A fourth state of matter, plasma, is similar to a gas. But instead of electrons being attached to molecules as they are in a gas, electrons in plasma are free to move. So we haven't talked about electrons, but as you guessed, electron is like what other word? Electricity. So electrons moving, in, which are parts of the atoms, when the electrons move, they can make electricity. So when you think about the bolts of lightning, right? Electricity. Plasma makes up the sun and occurs commonly on Earth as lightning. It's even found in neon and other fluorescent lights. Plasma shares some properties with gases, but plasma and gas are very different. For example, both are free to move and fill a container, but because the electrons in a plasma are free, they can conduct electricity and be controlled by electric charges. So under plasma, plasma is a gas where electrons are free and often results in electricity. Usually this is at like crazy hot temperatures like the stars or lightning. Or when we're talking about the neon lights, that's because it's a very low pressure. Um, and that's something if you're interested in right now, let me know. We can talk some more about. But for now, um, we're going to not talk about the pressure aspect of it. And you can just remember that, you know, the electrons are going crazy which we're going to result in some electricity and usually at very high temperatures. For example, stars or lightning. And in your notes, be careful because lightening means you're making something lighter or brighter. Like if you're painting, you add more white to it. Lightning is the one that I meant, like the stuff in the sky. Uh, just so you know, I do not count spelling unless it's something very specific, which I'll make a big deal to tell you about it. But obviously, try your best with the spelling. So we just talked about solid, liquid, and gas, which are the four what of matter? The four states of matter. Now we're going to talk about the different phases that matter can be in. 
So matter can change states. It can change from solid, liquid, gas, plasma. And those changes are accompanied by energy change. So it takes energy for it to change from one state to another. And we call that a phase change. So for example, if you hold an ice cube in your hand, it will melt. Melting is the change of state from solid to liquid. Melting requires energy in the form of heat, that is thermal energy. We'll talk about types of energy along the way. If you collect liquid water in a pan and let it sit at room temperature, it will eventually evaporate or change from a liquid to gas. Or if you add heat, it's going to boil. State changes involving adding or absorbing energy. If you want water to evaporate faster, you can heat it to boiling, add energy. By contrast, if you cool water vapor, you will condense it into liquid water. If you place water in a freezer, it will turn to ice. Both of those changes involve removing thermal energy. So if you're thinking to yourself, yeah, I knew that, you're right, you did. You know a lot about how chemistry works, and now we're just going to write it down in steps to make sure you have all the different parts. So if I'm changing from a solid to a liquid, what do we call that? You have a piece of ice, it changes to liquid water, what do we call that? Melting, melting. And does it take more energy or less energy for ice to melt? Well, it takes heat, right? You gotta heat it up. That means we're adding energy. Okay, what about if we're going from liquid to gas? If we're going from a liquid to gas, are we adding energy or taking it away? We're adding energy, we're heating that up. And what do we call it? When we go from liquid to gas, think about when you make noodles, what do you do to the water? Boil it. Okay, now let's go the other way. Let's say we have our water vapor and energy is released, or in other words, it's getting cooler because energy is going out, okay? Heat travels. There's no such thing as coldness traveling. It's just you're either adding heat or taking away heat. So we take away some heat and think about when you take a shower in the morning, you have that nice hot water, and what do you get on the mirror where you can like draw a heart and write, Mrs. KJ loves her husband, or, you know, whoever you want to make kissy faces with. You would write it on the condensation in the mirror. So condensing is what we call that phase. And what about when we go from a liquid to a solid? Well, you have your water. You want to change it into ice cubes. What do you do? You freeze it. And how do you do that? By taking away the heat energy. So let's add to our notes the phases of matter. For an object to go through a phase change, which means it's changing state, so we're changing from solid to liquid to gas, the object must gain or lose energy. And here are our phases of matter, freezing, melting, condensing, vaporizing, sublimation, and deposition. And you can write down the definitions like this, or you can put down this next picture. Which still shows that solid to liquid is melting, liquid to gas is boiling, vaporizing, evaporating, we're going to talk more about the differences between these coming up, but for now, liquid to gas, make sure you know that it's all three. Gas to liquid is condensing, and liquid to solid is freezing. Those are the ones that I really want you to know. If you know that sublimation is from a solid to a gas with no liquid phase, great. If not, it's not the most important. An example of that is when you have, um, you've ever seen, especially at Halloween, when people use frozen CO2 and it turns into gas right away with no liquid. For example, dry ice. So here's a chunk of dry ice. And yep, I'm stealing this off YouTube, so make sure I got my source on here. It's very hard, and dry ice is frozen carbon dioxide. And you can see that it's like a hovercraft. There's basically no friction, but it turns directly into a gas. There's no liquid. So that is sublimation. And there's all kinds of cool stuff you can do with dry ice. Um, but yeah, you should not touch it with your fingers because it can burn. It's so cold. And then the opposite of that is deposition, which is going from a gas to a solid with no liquid. And so a good example of that is like the frost on the lawn um, when you wake up in winter. So if you didn't have that finished up in your notes, make sure you go back, hit pause, and get that in your notes, either one or both. And I am going to run out of time on this one. This is our last video, but I would like you to pause and just read through this last paragraph on your own after I get cut off. <laughs> Consider what happens when ice is heated. 
In ice, the water molecules are attracted weakly to each other and are held in an order crystalline structure, so they stay in shape. The molecules don't have much energy, they only vibrate rather than move a lot as the ice 